Hello girls, uh, this is, I'm going to talk about chapter 4 today, which covers carbon. And as we know, carbon is a very useful atom for building molecules. Uh, it's found all living things are made up of these carbon-based molecules. These are organic molecules, um, which range in size, as we'll see. Now, it was once thought that only living things could produce organic molecules, which is kind of how they got their name, But uh, and this was known as vitalism, but we know that there are plenty of organic molecules that are not found in living things, and Stanley Miller here, who was at the time a graduate student at the University of Chicago, demonstrated that you could produce organic molecules from simple inorganic ones. We'll talk about his experiment in a little more detail in class. Um, carbon with its valence of four electrons. Of course, it wants to form four bonds to attempt to fill up that valence shell. And it forms covalent bonds. It really does not form ionic bonds. And it can, of course, bond with a variety of other types of atoms and with other carbon atoms, single bonds, double bonds, and sometimes even triple bonds. Um, so here, yeah, we see the valence of carbon with those four. It would like to have four more. And here's our other of the big four. Again, a variety of shapes from chains, chains with branches, and ring structures. You can see, for example, here, um, butane and isobutane have the same uh, formula, chemical formula, but a different structure. We'll talk about that in a second. Hydrocarbons, name is pretty self-explanatory. These are molecules that consist just of carbon and hydrogen, like these guys here. But there are many molecules in us that have particular combinations or stretches of carbon and hydrogen. For example, these fat molecules here have these long carbon-hydrogen chains. Um, that we'll discuss a bit more in the next chapter on organic molecules that are found in us. Isomers. Isomers are molecules, like we saw earlier with butane, that have the same formula, but a different structure. They come in three flavors here, these structural isomers. As you can see, a different arrangement. One's a long chain, one has the branch here. Geometric isomers are one, are isomers that are rotated on a double bond, you know this X represents some other part of the molecule. And they're both above here, but now they're once below. It's been rotated on that double bond. And the nantiomers, which are ones that are mirror images of each other. These isomers, when um, compounds are synthesized, often different isomers are made. And here's an example of this one called DOPA that comes in these two forms, L and D. This is a compound that people can synthesize in the lab. And in both forms will be made. And you notice the one form is biologically active against this condition, Parkinson's disease. And the other one is basically inert. We'll talk in class a bit more about this and see this video, or I'm sorry, go to this link and see this one, thalidomide, which was a drug that was used uh, decades ago um, to treat morning sickness, but it has an isomer that causes some problems we'll discuss. Functional groups, or these organic molecules, have, typically have uh, particular combinations of atoms known as functional groups that are attached to them, and they give those molecules certain properties for example, look at these two steroids here. They have these, this is the typical steroid shape with these four rings, carbon-hydrogen rings. But you notice we have these functional groups attached on this hydroxyl group and this methyl group here, for example. And even though these molecules look very similar, because of the different arrangement of these functional groups, they are quite different, one being a type of estrogen and one being testosterone that helps make males males and females females. As in the case with these male and female mallards, the peacock and the peahen, and these prairie chickens, the male with his elaborate feathers here. All right, here's the functional groups we're going to worry about. And so hydroxyl, carbonyl, 
and carboxyl. These slides are a little unique in that we're going to look at the three groups here. You can see some of the traits. Next slide, here's a hydroxyl group in action. Um, alcohols will have hydroxyl groups, although all molecules with hydroxyl groups are not necessarily alcohols. In the uh, carbonyl group, you can notice they can be at the end of the molecule or in the middle. If they're in the middle, they're known as um, ketones, and otherwise they're known as aldehydes. Carboxyl groups are found in molecules called carboxylic acids, acetic acid being an example. And there it is at the end of the molecule here. And hydroxyl groups give molecules that have them a certain polarity because of this molecule at this, I'm sorry, this oxygen, which is at this one end, which again tends to attract and hold electrons a bit more, so giving that molecule a slight polarity, which is why alcohols can dissolve in water. All right, uh, let's see. Um, carboxylic acids, that hydrogen tends to break off or dissociate, and so this molecule will form these ions, and particularly this one will help to acidify the solution, thus carboxylic acids. All right, amino groups, sulfhydro groups, phosphate groups. There they are, NH2, SH, and these phosphorus and all these oxygens. So amino groups are found in amino acids, like this simple one called glycine here. There's an example of a, one with a sulfhydro group and a phosphate group. The amino groups on these amino acids will tend to pick up an extra hydrogen and thus they can act as bases. Sulfhydro groups, main thing we'll worry about there is that we'll see when they, they are commonly found in proteins and they're part of the tertiary structure of proteins. They help proteins bend up into a particular shape and these sulfhydro groups form what are called these um, um, sulfhydro bridges. And phosphate groups are often used in energy exchanges. We'll see that with ATP and ADP. Again, carbon quite versity, versatile, making a wide variety of molecules and all living things being made up of organic molecules. We'll focus on the four main types of organic molecules in the next chapter. Okay, bye-bye.